Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I want to talk to you about Jane Austen's Juvenalia. So, Jane Austen is of course best known for the novels that she wrote in her adult life. But I personally have a great fondness for the short stories um, and other weird things that Jane Austen wrote when she was a teenager. Jane Austen was a hilarious teenager and her juvenilia is wonderful. It's bizarre, it's witty, it's silly, it's absurd, it's much more risky and less conventional than her later works. Jane Austen's juvenilia is full of drunkenness, of scandal, of murder, poisoning, theft and debt. Jane Austen's juvenilia features women proposing to men, women with no interest in men, women engaged to multiple men at once, women manning warships, duchesses who are friends with pub landladies and other cross-class friendships, high-class ladies running off with servants, children disobeying their parents on principle, ridiculous coincidences, not that many happy endings, utter silliness and absurdity, and complete hilarity. Jane Austen's juvenilia is absolutely hilarious. It is so, so, so funny. So today I just want to talk to you about a few of my favourite pieces of Jane Austen's juvenilia. I have um, six things I want to talk to you about, all of which I really, really enjoy. Um, the Jane Austen Juvenalia I have is in these two collections. I mean, I mean, I say it's in this, like, I think everything that's in this is in here. So this collection has her unfinished novels and her shorter work, Lady Susan, but it also has a lot of her Juvenalia in. Um, and I really, really enjoy Jane Austen's Juvenalia. Um, there's some amazing stuff in here. So I reread a lot of her Juvenalia this month and I've just really, really enjoyed it. So my favourite Juvenalia um, short story is Jack and Alice, which is truly hilarious and amazing. Jack and Alice is about a girl called Alice. It's not about a boy called Jack. Jack barely features. The only time Jack is mentioned is when Jack dies. Alice and her parents all like to drink a lot of alcohol a lot of the time and they also like to gamble. Um, Alice is desperately in unrequited love with a gentleman who lives nearby who is incredibly beautiful. He is in fact, um, in the words of Jane Austen, an amiable, accomplished and bewitching young man of so dazzling a beauty that none but eagles could look him in the face. Um, and Alice is desperately in love with this young man, Charles Adams, um, but unfortunately Charles Adams does not seem to be in love with her. So the short story partly focuses on um, Alice's love for Charles Adams, but also while out walking one day, Alice and Lady Williams meet um, another young woman who is also desperately in love with Charles Adams, um, and the moment they meet this young woman whose leg is in a bear trap, in the, in the woods. So weird. Um, this young woman tells Lady Williams and Alice the story of her life and her love for Charles Adams and, and then everything goes really, really crazy. It's very, very silly. It's completely bizarre, but it's just my favourite because it's completely absurd and dreamlike, but also really Jane Austen-like. And it just it's just completely mad in all the best ways. There are some wonderful lines in it. I already read you the Eagles line, which I love, but another wonderful line from Jack and Alice is, she has many charming qualities, but sobriety is not one of them. There's a lot of people getting drunk um, and there's a lot of scandal and jealousy um, and awful people in Jack and Alice and the ending is perfect and truly hilarious. I can't recommend it enough. It's a really wonderful story. Another of my favourite um, Juvenalia short stories is one called The Beautiful Cassandra, which is really, really short. So I think I'm just going to read you the whole thing because it's that short and it's that wonderful. And I think if you listen to The Beautiful Cassandra, you'll get a very good sense of what Jane Austen's Juvenalia is like. So if you don't know, Jane Austen's sister was called Cassandra and this short story is dedicated to her. The Beautiful Cassandra. A novel in 12 chapters dedicated by permission to Miss Austen. Dedication. Madam, you are a phoenix. Your taste is refined, your sentiments are noble and your virtues innumerable. Your person is lovely, your figure elegant and your form majestic. Your manners are polished, your conversation is rational and your appearance singular. If, therefore, the following tale will afford one moment's amusement to you, every wish will be gratified of your most humble, obedient servant, the author. Chapter the First. Cassandra was the daughter and only daughter of a celebrated milliner in Bond Street. Her father was of noble birth, being the near relation to the Duchess of X's butler. Chapter the Second. When Cassandra had attained her sixteenth year, she was lovely and amiable, and chancing to fall in love with an elegant bonnet that her mother had just completed bespoke for the Countess of X, she placed it on her gentle head and walked from her mother's shop to make her fortune. Chapter the Third. 
The first person she met was the Viscount of X, a young man no less celebrated for his accomplishments and virtues than for his elegant and beauty. She curtsied and walked on. Chapter the fourth. She then proceeded to the pastry cooks, where she devoured six ices, refused to pay for them, knocked down the pastry cook and walked away. Chapter the fifth. She next ascended a hackney coach and ordered it to Hampstead, where she no sooner arrived than she ordered the coachman to turn around and drive her back again. Chapter the sixth. Being returned to the same spot on the same street she had set out from, the coachman demanded his pay. Chapter 7. She searched her pockets over and over again, but every search was unsuccessful. No money could she find. The man grew peremptory. She placed her bonnet on his head and ran away. Chapter the 8th. Through many a street she then proceeded and met in none the least adventure till on turning a corner of Bloomsbury Square she met Mariah. Chapter the 9th. Cassandra started and Mariah seemed surprised. They trembled, blushed, turned pale and passed each other in a mutual silence. Chapter the 10th. Cassandra was then accosted by her friend the widow, who squeezing out her little head through her less window asked her how she did. Cassandra curtsied and went on. Chapter the 11th. A quarter of a mile brought her to her parental roof in Bond Street, from which she had now been absent nearly seven hours. Chapter the 12th. She entered it and was pressed to her mother's bosom by that worthy woman. Cassandra smiled and whispered to herself, this is a day well spent. It's so ridiculous, I love it so much. Another of my favourite pieces of Jane Austen juvenilia is um, Henry and Eliza. This is another fun one like Jack and Alice that is short and ridiculous and just so bizarre. We basically follow um, a young woman called Eliza who is the adopted daughter of um, the people who have raised her um, and then one day she decides she's going to steal lots of money from them and so they renounce her and then she goes to stay um, with some other people and then meets an engaged couple and um, falls in love with the man so her and the man run away abandoning um, his original fiance and everything kind of goes on from there. Like Jack and Alice it is very silly. Another thing that is quite fun is that um, one of Jane Austen's brothers was called Henry um, and they had a cousin called Eliza um, who Henry married much later on in life but when when they were young, well, young people, they weren't children, though Jane was, um, Henry and Eliza had like a long-standing flirtation. So there's some speculation that this story is like a family joke, which is quite fun. I think perhaps the most ridiculous piece of Jane Austen juvenilia is probably Love and Friendship. Now, a few years ago, there was a film adaptation of Lady Susan, which they called Love and Friendship, which is really confusing because there is a piece of juvenilia called Love and Friendship, but this is completely separate from Lady Susan. But Love and Friendship is a story told in letters about one woman's life um, and her friendships um, and romantic relationship. It begins where um, this young woman is living with her parents and then a man shows up at their door and she's like, oh my God, I'm in love with him. And then they like run off and then her parents die and then they steal some money and they meet some other people who've stolen some money and then some people get in prison and some people die. Um, and her and her best friend try and persuade everyone they can to disobey their parents. Completely bizarre, very wonderful, highly recommend it for a good laugh. Another piece of Jane Austen's juvenilia that I love is a series of letters called Three Sisters, which is about three sisters and a horrible man who wants to marry one of them. He is not very nice, but he's very, very wealthy. Um, so their mother is quite keen that he marry one of the three of them. He is quite keen to marry one of the three sisters, but he doesn't really care which sister. So he proposes to the eldest one first, and she doesn't know whether or not to accept him because she thinks it would be a real triumph if she accepted him because he's so rich and she would really like the fact that he's so rich, but also he's really not very nice and he's really old but she thinks that if she refuses him one of her sisters would accept him and then one of her sisters would have a really rich husband and she wouldn't like that um, and so everything kind of goes on from there it's very silly again and such good fun slightly different piece of Jane Austen's juvenilia is her history of England um, which is a non-fiction non-fiction work um, where Jane Austen as a teenager went through um, the kings and queens of England from, I think, um, Henry IV to Charles I, I think that's right, and gives her a little rundown on each king and queen. The subtitle to the history of England is um, by a partial prejudiced and ignorant historian, and definitely her accounts of English kings and queens is pretty, pretty biased. Um, there are some which she hates and some which she likes and some which she doesn't care about at all. Um, she really, really hates Elizabeth I, like massively. It's really interesting to read. I think it's probably less funny if you don't know 
anything about these kings and queens previously um, because Jane Austen is being very silly about many of them and yeah it's just wonderful. Basically I love Jane Austen's juvenilia because it is utterly silly. Like I would say Jane Austen's later novels have a really beautiful balance of seriousness and silliness but there is that wonderful streak of silliness in her. You know that part of Jane Austen that created characters like Mr Collins is very silly um, and I love that about Jane Austen and I love that about her books and I love it in her juvenilia because it's just like like every character is a Mr Collins every character is absurd and ridiculous every character is so extreme and another thing I love about Jane Austen's juvenilia is the way it like parodies and takes the mick out of romantic love um because obviously when we think of Jane Austen we think of her six novels which all sort of end in marriage and are all working towards marriage but in her juvenilia like aiming for marriage and falling in love with someone and getting married it's all made to seem like completely ridiculous and everyone's emotions is pushed to the extreme and really silly there's so much insta love which is just shown to be completely ridiculous um, and I find it really funny and I feel like Jane Austen is really criticising society um, in a slightly more open way than maybe she does in her later novels because these weren't for publication, these were just for her family. She was trying to make people laugh. Um, a lot of them are dedicated to her siblings or her friends. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say today. Please go ahead and read Jane Austen's Juvenalia. It is absolutely hilarious. It just makes me laugh so much. It's wonderful. So funny and so silly and so like rebellious in many ways, breaking all the late 18th century customs and norms, just shoving all the rules out the window. You know, propriety is just completely gone in her juvenilia and I love it. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say for today. Please let me know if you've read Jane Austen's juvenilia and what you thought of it. And that's all. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.